Why, hello, Bonnie. Did you know that we have a shop for our book and product recommendations? Right on our website at deconversiontherapypodcast.com, and then you click on the book slash product recommendations. You mean like our merch? Our irreverent merch? No, no. We have another store just for recommended books like Pure by Linda Klein about purity culture. Or my favorite, Sex Comedy God by Pete Holmes. And my favorite, Misquoting Jesus by Bart Aram, that played an instrumental part in shaking up my beliefs that I was indoctrinated in. Plus, we have some cornball and some favorite Mm. products from Jesus bobbleheads for your car to some totally unrelated to the podcast things that we love also that give a peek into who we are in our personal lives. Little Easter eggs in there. On our website, we even included a non-Amazon bookstore link for people who want to support independent bookstores with the proceeds. So you can click on deconversiontherapypodcast.com, then go to book slash product recommendations, or click on the link in the details of this episode. Welcome to Deconversion Therapy. This is ex-evangelical missionary Karen. And this is just plain Bonnie who stopped going to church. Oh, just bragging that she's smarter than I was. No. But welcome to Deconversion Therapy. And this is our letter sode where we get to read all your insane stories and make fun of you, which is always a delight. And... Please send in your true stories of growing up in religion, church, whatever you like, and we'll read it on the air, and then everyone will laugh at you. Um, (laughs) Can I just interject any religion, please? I'd like some other religions as well, because I know there's some shit going on there. Not going to say who they are. But we know. My friend Jake. (laughs) Jake. Um. Exactly. So we don't care if you want to, you know, enlighten us. Of course, we've had some great Mennonite stories. I think the Itchy Butt story was a Mennonite one. You know, (laughs) plenty, plenty. And please find us on all our social medias. Everything we have for you, we're delivering right there in the details of this handy dandy podcast app you're listening to. Anywho, let's get started, Bonnie, at just, um, you know, these losers that write us. I think (laughs) Bonnie's so nice. She's like, I love all the letters. And then I come on here and shit on people. (laughs) She's doing that with her tongue in her cheek. I'm looking at her. I cannot put the tongue in the cheek. This is just, (laughs) it's called good cop, bad cop. Oh, okay. That's what we're doing. I enjoy this. This is my favorite part. So... The first one here is from somebody who says it's okay to use their name. So it's Bethany. Get excited. Hey, My Beth. Star. Annie. <laughs> so Bethany says, hi, Karen and Bonnie. I was debating what story to write in and was about to tell you all about the Christian screamo music scene when my Mm, husband, we'll call him Nate because that's his name, <laughs> told me a story I had to share. Don't worry, he's cool with me sharing it. I was telling him about the letter sodes about persecution night and the hell simulation when he nonchalantly went, oh, I experienced something similar growing up, and my jaw hit the floor. So let me tell you about Hobo Fest. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's promising just by the name. Okay. Nate grew up going to a non-denominational church in Wisconsin, and one summer in the early 2000s, the church decided to do a new overnight event for the 4th to 6th grade kids. The idea was to simulate what being a Christian kid in a third world country would oh, be like. Shit. It's I so to, embarrassing. <laughs> I like, know. Please, oh. I have to tell you guys, though, like, I don't read these through before I'm reading them, but I have to be a couple sentences ahead just to, like, pronounce shit correctly. <laughs> so that's why I giggled with the <laughs> the concept I, of what Hobo Fest would be. Between that and the third world country and, you know, 
kids and are doing why'd they terrible call it hobo? accents. What? Because they well, I guess probably we're gonna think find it's the out. same thing. I, I guess we're going to find yeah. out. Okay, so... Um, no, oh, well, <laughs> I would have found out if I'd actually been reading two sentences in. No, it was not officially called Hobo Fest, but Nate and his friends were a creative <laughs> bunch. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. The youth leaders dressed up all the kids in rags. <laughs> So no, shitty. No. And had them build shelters made from foraged cardboard in the church parking lot. Shit. I am so <laughs> sorry to every country ever, <laughs> anywhere. Right. They oh. then had to sleep overnight in their little huts until it was time for church the next morning. The kids were not allowed to use the church bathrooms, but had a makeshift outhouse consisting of a hole in the ground with walls around it. I'm cringing at all the white savior complex and persecution so fetish bad. going on here as I'm Shit. typing. Oh, my God. By the way, when I was in, I was on a class trip over to Italy and they all they had for a bathroom was a hole in the ground. And I remember like, can I possibly not pee on my pants when I'm out <laughs> at a bar? <laughs> Just pee in this you hole cannot. in the ground? Uh, we'll uh, never know. Well, um, you know that I was in India, and I have all the bathroom stories oh, that you we'll do and to don't want to know. <laughs> we need a bathroom story. All right, so oh, um, let's see. The whole experience must have been to condition these poor kids to be martyrs because the youth leaders chaperoning were mainly there to punish any kid who talked about Jesus. Punishments. Oh, I see. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm still working on that. Um Okay, punishments included being sprayed by water guns, having a bucket of water poured on their cardboard shelter, having their blankets and pillow taken away, and not getting any food. And yes, there were kids that tried to witness to the adults and faced punishment. For example, they had to walk a long way to fill their water bottles, and when they reached the hose, a youth leader would ask if they followed Jesus. Anyone who answered yes would have their water dumped out and had to wait until the next water run. But there's something you need to know about Nate. He's always been a bit of a rascal, so he and his group of friends decided that being punished did not sound like a good time and logically refrained from any religious talk. Instead, they made (laughs) a (laughs) huge... And they left as Hindus that night. (laughs) Um, So instead, they made a huge-ass cardboard fort together and caused shenanigans. He specifically remembers one boy taking off his pants and loudly (laughs) singing the song, Let It Snow, while running around the parking lot. And did the adults punish him? Nope. They were too focused on persecuting the good Christian (laughs) kids to notice the streaker. (laughs) <laughs> the next morning, the group of kids had to attend the service in their rags and were paraded around the sanctuary. Some sane adults or enraged parents must have complained to the church officials because Hobo Fest was never repeated. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, we don't think it was my in-laws. I sometimes wonder how both of us grew into normal adults. Anyway, I absolutely love the podcast, and thanks for making us laugh so much. Ah, uh, uh, thank that's you, awesome for living or your partner living through torture to please <laughs> us. And you know that they were parading them around in church, just like yeah. our kids—they really learned some valuable lessons. Yeah. Streaking is okay is the lesson. <laughs> right. I realize what to do when you're dehydrated. I realize. <laughs> yeah. Karen, oh do you remember in, I think it was maybe fifth grade, maybe sixth, we all changed in separate rooms, but there was a common room in the middle, and one oh, of our yes. friends came out in his underpants. That's and right. I had just never laughed so hard. It was oh, and a great why that memory. made us laugh. I mean, it was mainly because because <laughs> it's he funny. Was ADHD, Aww. and the teacher couldn't control him. <laughs> and and we've told it before about when they were getting so out of control at our Baptist school, which of course my parents sent me to because we were Baptists, and other kids were sent to because yeah. they were Hellions, right? And they would, uh, the teacher finally, yeah, made them run laps in the morning to get all their, you know, their energy, energy out. out. Yeah. But <laughs> they found Playboy magazines in the dumpster <laughs> while they were running. Anywho. That was <clears throat> the recycling drive that we had. Oh, that's right. 
At least we were recycling, Bonnie. We were recycling. Oh, God, I would love to know who came and put all those magazines in there. (laughs) My parents. There were tons of colonoscopy todays in that dumpster. (laughs) This one's from Allie. Hi, Bonnie and Karen, or as I also refer to you, my surrogate moms who say fuck sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) You do not want us as mothers. My mom has said probably two curse words in her entire life and drank less than two ounces of alcohol in her almost 60 years. We are not 60. Let me remind people we are not 60. (laughs) She's fun in her own ways. Laughy face. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Write us a letter about that. Anyways, let's get to the good stuff, which is also the humiliating stuff. But it's been long enough, so now it's fine if you all laugh at my misery. Yes. To set the <laughs> stage, both my parents were raised Baptists in different parts of the country and met at a Baptist college that literally used to be a military base and had very strict rules. The school shut down in the last 10 years, probably, not surprisingly. They had my sister and then me five years later. My dad was an associate pastor at a Baptist church in Minnesota when I was born, and they left after some kind of drama happened that ended up involving the FBI. What? Or so I was told. Yeah, tell that story. I know that the letter's not even about that. (laughs) Who knows? I was three months old, so who's to say? Um, They are to say. Allie, please go back. We ended up moving to Pennsylvania, where my dad went to seminary and got his master's of theology. For all the legalism he was raised in, he loved to study and debate and not take things at face value just because a pastor said it. Thank God, LOL. We went to one church for a long time, and when there was a split— that they called a church plant. My dad was an oversharer, and since he was a deacon and best friends with the associate pastor starting the new church, I was more in the loop than I should have been at 13 or 14. Anyway, we started going to the new church as I was starting high school. My youth pastor who was in a men's group with my dad loved to pick on me in the front of the whole youth group. And since my dad overshared, he told me how my youth pastor told him he hated him in a heated argument. Soon what? after, <laughs> my youth pastor told me I was, quote, just like my dad because <gasps> I annoyed him in some way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you didn't go to church, like the inner workings of the politics of of people. This is right down the line perfect. But you don't okay. even have an HR department. So it's like no. nobody's going to come around and go, okay, you can't say you hate him. Right. <laughs> have to leave the minor kid alone uh, with right. your braiding. <laughs> anyway, he was pretty much the worst. Flash forward to a few years, somewhere in between 2012 and 2014, and my youth group was on our first international short-term mission trip because everyone knows when white people go to the needy countries, our seven-day presence is the answer to all the locals' prayers. Okay, international. Come on. I did that. Uh, Well, as you know, we did international once. Remember we went to the Bahamas? That does not count. We Why only not? needed our we only needed identification. We didn't even need passports. Well, I mean, we thought of them as lower, so you know, they weren't Christian. Actually they were. We always just <laughs> right. did VBS and churches. Um, at the beginning of the trip, the trip leader had a big meeting with us and the other U.S. groups that were there for the same reason. Quote, at the end of this trip, you'll be surprised that you all feel like family. We did not. (laughs) We did not. I do not have sex with my family members. (laughs) We stayed at a four-star resort for our, quote, safety. Oh, Oh, I have so many stories. Bullshit. I can tell you. 
<laughs> oh, I get this. I get this. Uh, we went to one of the world's biggest McDonald's. Hmm, now I can hmm. guess where this is. Rode the country's longest zip line. Listen, okay. you, ha- you have to get into the culture. Yeah. Allie, you have to understand it from above. So I get that. And <laughs> from a went line to of lo- wire? <laughs> went to local markets where I almost bought some Cuban cigars, but decided to get non-Cuban ones so I wouldn't go to jail, <laughs> which I'd later smuggled back into the state. I was such a badass. Okay, when, A, you're using tobacco items as a church-going kid. <laughs> you should not be in. Yeah. When we weren't vacationing, we went to a home where children with nutritional deficiencies stayed and helped oh. with various things around the home. I have done this. This is me. I have like gone what? Always. We, like, when we were in Haiti, we would go to villages and we would have like poster boards and different things about how they should combine their carbs and their proteins and different things. But And we, like, gave polio drops. We were doing a lot of shit. Anyway. um, And part of our meetings where we prepped for the trip, we were told about the facilities we would be, quote, serving at. The big culture shock was that the bathroom was co-ed, Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I turn around, get on that plane. I did. Uh, when you're a teenager, yeah, fuck that, no. Um, and we needed to throw our used toilet paper into the wastebasket oh, instead God. of flushing it for the sake of their plumbing. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, there were probably five stalls in the bathroom, and the stall doors were floor to ceiling, so you couldn't look underneath to see if okay. there were feet or not. I'm sure you can see where this is going. I cannot, I will not, because I am working on psychological safety. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, I had to go pee before I left with a small group who was spending the day at a senior center. I have bad anxiety, so I was trying to pee and catch my breath before going somewhere new, which is really hard for me. Get it? Get it? I forgot to lock the stall door, and after peeing, I spread my legs more to wipe, and right at that moment, my youth pastor no, no. came barging into my stall, my vulva on full display, <laughs> and Your after vulva? the longest second of my life, he finally shut the door, and I sat there mortified that the person I liked least, oh, remember, he hated the father, oh my God, oh, had right, just right, walked right. in to see my private and full display. Oh my uh. God. Oh, I'm glad uh, he didn't have a camera because, yeah, anyway. You know, I, I mean, in, in hindsight, well, oh God. Hindsight? It was front sight, Bonnie. I eventually left the stall and went and confided to my closest friend on the trip what had happened, then went to the senior center. When I got back, my friend had told everyone that they were all laughing at me and I wanted to die. Suffice to say, my friend who told everyone's no longer my friend. I no longer go to that church or any church, such a heathen, and I'm thankfully a lot more comfortable with my body. Listen, even if you're more comfortable with your body, um, having a youth pastor get the gyno tour is not, you don't ever have to be comfortable (laughs) with that. Um, let's see. Thank you for your amazing show. It's so nice to have a deconstruction, deconversion podcast that is funny and not adding more stress to my very stress brain. Much love and be blessed, or as we like to say, be blessed. <laughs> Allie, yes. man, get, uh, hopefully therapy is being paid for. <laughs> I love that people are happy that it's just fluffy and a little bit on the lighter side. The yeah, stuff we talk sure. about, our content. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you. That's a very nice compliment. Thank you. And um, I cannot imagine, Bonnie, I want you to picture yourself in that scenario and then our youth pastor I did. That. That's all I was doing oh, the whole time. And God. I realized that, you know, when he went in, he probably didn't have his line of vision right at my crotch. So like, hey, guess what? He probably saw nothing in honesty. 
you know, but so comfort you, yourself with that. I did not know you were picturing this so dramatically. The whole time. Oh, wow. I'm glad I was reading and, and couldn't think of it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I would be, so when I was a missionary in India, so, of course, everything, as the toilet stories go, we had one bathroom at this one place, and it was the hole in the um, floor. And you knew what someone was doing by if they were bringing toilet tissue in or not. So, yeah, right. And let me combine for you Indian food and people. So no that thanks. bathroom, no. what, the bathroom had to go to therapy. It was a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> I will also tell you one of the things that just popped into my head that about our youth minister He went with us one night to McDonald's in between like choir practice and church or something Mm -hmm. like that. And we all had to walk across the street from McDonald's to get back to the side that church was on. Yeah. And I had a little ice cream cone and he took it from me and bit off the bottom of the cone so that all the ice cream would then like drip down and I couldn't like (sighs) enjoy it anymore. I'm like, okay, thanks. See? (laughs) Uh, if if you guys haven't listened to any of our other stuff about how we grew up and all this stuff, I must say he sort of got his comeuppance, even though I think he's still a pastor somewhere. No, he retired. Because, yeah, I, ca- I can't say that it's a good thing, but when they had a small dog and they um, couldn't find it and they had guests over and they're all sitting on the couch and realized um, the dog had been folded in the couch but anyway let's let's move on oh, that wasn't a happy thing wow <laughs> now now people will know who it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so this other person does not want their name read which makes me more excited to read the letter <laughs> all right um okay so you'll like this one they call you out by name uh my story I was delighted to hear that Karen loves to visit libraries. I do, too, so much that I became a children's librarian. Oh, yay! I I know. I'm in charge of ordering the DVDs for the children's department. We have a large audience of Christian conservative families who homeschool. Despite this, I still love my job. So I choose one biblical DVD for our shelves. Oh, she said she chose. Sorry. Um... My manager watched the trailer and said, this movie is too violent. This DVD belongs on the adult shelves, not in the children's. Without blinking an eye, I said, but it's from the Bible. My evangelical upbringing taught me to just accept the violence I watched in Christian movies. Children (laughs) dying by the sword, Christians being fed to the lions, and nails being driven into hands and feet. I guess I became so desensitized that I thought nothing of ordering a biblical movie for children. Needless to say, I stay away from all that and just stick with Paw Patrol, PJ Masks, and Peppa Pig. Love you all. Thank you so much for your podcast. It's absolutely true. Like, we're so fucked up from all that stuff. And I remember when The Passion of Jesus Christ came out and like youth groups were going and I'm like, do you not, do you not understand? This is the most violent yeah. thing. Uh, and the, just the threat of hell. Hello. I know. <laughs> not good. Read another one. Okay, I'll end with a little short one. This one's from Amanda. I was raised Catholic and Lutheran also known as Catholic Light, but but after going off to college, never really attended because my parents couldn't force me anymore. (sighs) I guess you went to a normal college. Good for you, Amanda, whatever. Yeah, we were forced. All right. Cut to my first serious college boyfriend. His his name was (laughs) David, and then she gives the last name and says, I don't care if you use his name. He's a piece of shit. (laughs) 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 And he was your stereotypical, non-denominational, megachurch kind of guy. Literally, 
His church was located in an old furniture warehouse. (laughs) I refused to convert to his religion after attending a singular four-hour service with speaking in tongues. A whole ass band, literally five pastors for some reason, and oh my God, it was so long. Four That's hours. I mean, That's the audacity of them to think that you just have nothing else to do also. No, you don't. You're supposed to, on Sunday, set aside all of it for God, Bonnie. That's why you never became a missionary like I did. No, we went to the <sighs> beach on Sundays. That was for God. Oh, that was. Toasty for God. Okay, I was used to one-hour-long services that were pretty quiet, and I could ignore easily with a smutty novel shoved in the hymnal. This is a whole different ball game. After a few serious makeout sessions, he had his bestie tell me that God spoke to him. Oh boy! Literally, how, my dude? And told him that I was not of God and to dump me. He's now a youth pastor somewhere in southern New Mexico. Do I thank God for me dodging this bullet or <laughs> who? Whatever, at least I dodged it. Love your podcast so much. It's hilariously irreverent and helps me laugh at my own trauma. Which, let's be honest, laughing is necessary because Zoloff only gets you so far. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, That's we awesome. Could do a whole uh, the trauma, not only of just the church, the teachings, the theology, the this, the that, but the the people you date when you go to church and yeah. how fucked up that whole thing makes you because they believe they hear from God or they don't hear enough or you have to pray or like one boyfriend and I did write down rules. Mm-hmm. No dry humping. Da, me, da, da. Like all that shit. Oh, my gosh. If I could just also make a mm, a theory here that uh, the friend said she was not of God because she probably liked it. And that was a shock to him. Liked the making out. They yeah. Prob- she probably oh. enjoyed what they were doing. And or, he was like, whoa, you can't yeah. enjoy this. Mm-mm, I've got to be... I've got to be straight up and down, even though he was straight up and down. Um, And probably, you know, she went to a a non-Christian church. She was maybe maybe she put her hand somewhere without him begging her to put it somewhere. Oh, Oh, he liked what he liked. He just could not face it. He could not tell her eye to eye. So he used a friend and God. That's what he did. Yeah. Damn pieces of shit. And his name was <laughs> Elon Musk. All right. So thank you guys for listening. Send in your funny stories. We love it. We love hearing from you. And you can even mail us things. Oh, you could put your your letter in a letter. And then you guys would hear paper while we read it. In an envelope. <laughs> I know. With a stamp. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.